What's up you guys? I'm Dan. This is Frugal Not Cheap. I've had my 2017 Model S for a little bit over a year now. Let's see how much the cost of ownership is for a used Tesla. So if you're new to the channel, I bought my 2017 Tesla Model S in uh, late February of 2021. I think actually um, he ended up cashing my check on March the 5th and I paid $38,077. So if you're looking at the used car prices now or used model S prices, you might think that that's quite attractive because uh, really it was about the same cost as say a Honda Accord Touring, a new one at that time. Um, but since then, of course, things have gotten pretty wonky in the car market, getting a little bit better the past couple of months as of this filming in early June. Uh, but still, used car prices went way up because uh, new cars uh, were in shortage and there were long lines. And so if you wanted a car now, then um, a lot of times you had no recourse but to go into the used market. So I have a video about that and you can check it out if you feel like. Uh, in any event, uh, that's what I paid, just a little bit over $38,000 for a 2017 Tesla Model S with a 75 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, the bigger ones went for, had 100 kilowatt hours, by the way. Um, so this gave it a 250 mile range. Um, and then it was rear wheel drive. So it was not the D, not a dual motor, where you'd have one motor in the front and one motor in the back, the back being more powerful. My car just has the more powerful motor in the rear. Also a couple of other things that make my car a little bit cheaper than other uh, used Model S's uh, is that it did not come with uh, air suspension. Mine has the um, you know standard coil suspension. Uh, it is quite good though, I think it's very comfortable. And it's also cheaper to repair if something goes wrong. Um, it did have some niceties though, it had the premium upgrades package. So it had a leather interior, this is the last time you could get leather. Uh, also, um, not the premium audio though. I do sometimes wish it had the premium audio, but it still sounds really good uh, with the bass audio. Uh, but it also came with a free lifetime um, LTE connection. So that's the premium data connection. And so that's great. So, you know, I can stream Netflix and Hulu, Disney Plus and all that. YouTube, <laughs> of course, YouTube, uh, while I'm sitting around somewhere in the car. Uh, I think a great value there because the subscription costs something like, I don't know, 10 bucks a month or about $100 a year, I think it is. Oh, and the car had uh, 70, around 70,000 miles when I bought it. Yep, right around 70,000 miles. I did trade in my old Acura, 2010 Acura TSX in the deal. I bought my car from a guy named Richie uh, who operates out of Long Island. Um, it's uh, Nice Cars Long Island, I think is the, the website. Um, South Shore Auto Brokers is the name of the business. Anyway, I had a really great experience with him. So actually he, he bought my car sight unseen and then I bought his car, the Model S sight unseen. Uh, just looking at the photos and then I talked to him and did a little video chat as well. So uh, it was a really good experience. So um, $6,000 on the trade-in. Uh, that brought you know my out-of-pocket cost to $32,000. But um, then, then I, I did a couple of uh, um, some major upgrades to the car right as soon as I got it. So it came with Navigate on Autopilot, which I think was at the time maybe like a $3,000 uh, option. The way they do things now is a little different. You get standard autopilot, I think now, and then the only thing you can pay for it beyond that is FSD. And FSD is what I got. So I paid $5,000 for the full self-driving package. And I think of this as a really um, fairly expensive call option. Right, so I pay $5,000 now for the possibility that uh, at some point, <laughs> we don't know exactly when, uh, they're going to figure out um, how to make the car able to drive on its own on city streets. And it looks like they're, um, you know, they're getting closer and closer as we look at the videos from people like uh, Chuck Cook and Dirty Tesla and uh, and Rob Marr. And so along with that, when I had when I had them install the um, uh, the full self driving computer, which goes in the glove box. I also had the media center upgraded. So this is the MCU media control unit. I had that upgraded from the old style uh, to the new one, which is capable of doing um, all of those entertainment options we talked about, plus a bunch of games. And it's much, much snappier because it just, it's better able to keep up with the current software. It's now been superseded, of course, to have now Ryzen processors in, uh, I guess, MCU 3, you might call it. Hopefully though, it'll still be able to, to last and keep going for a good while. Uh, this upgrade was expensive. It was $1,500. Um, plus there was another $93.75 in there for, uh, I don't remember what, but the total came out to, um, came out to $1593.75. Maybe sales tax? 
I don't really know. I had it done in Massachusetts and not in New Hampshire. In any event, those were two major upgrades that uh, I paid for, but I don't think it's really fair to lump them into the cost of ownership. Those were just uh, upgrades that I wanted to get, right? Some other things that I needed to get, there, I think there were two floor mats, but nothing in the rear. There were cloth. I didn't really like them. So I got some all-weather mats uh, from Amazon. Uh, I paid $110 for those, and I'm very, very happy with them. The uh, the driver's side one doesn't quite fit as flush as I would like in some spots, but hasn't um, really hampered its ability to sort of keep all of the dirt and whatever um, within the mat and, and away from uh, from the car itself. So that's been pretty nice. Uh, then I got a touch-up paint kit from Tesla for $55. And uh, it's a bit pricey, but yeah, it's a good little kit. And I was able to, to touch up a few spots. Um, you know, of course, the car was a 2017, right? Uh, I think it was built in September, and I bought it again, you know, uh, early March of 2021. So, you know, of course, uh, it was going to have a little bit of wear on it. Then I also needed to get some new wiper blades. The ones that were on the car, I don't know if they're the OEM Tesla ones or what, um, but they just, uh, they were prone to streaking and they didn't, they didn't work all that well. Uh, after looking online on the forums, I found that some Bosch icons would probably do the job. And so I got those. Um, they're doing great. They are expensive though. They were $52.14 combined, uh, one of them smaller than the other. Uh, besides that, I haven't really had to buy anything, um, had to buy anything. Like, so I think the wipers, I think, were pretty necessary. The mats were necessary because it was missing some equipment when I got it. Um, other things, I bought some, uh, some door trim clips. I think I told you in a recent video um, that my passenger side door was still kind of um, not always staying, uh, the clips weren't always staying engaged and, and uh, tight and it would kind of pop off. For some reason. Uh, recently I uh, took it apart and found out why. Um, we had some broken clips and one that was kind of like um, it was popped out in such a way that it wasn't able to really seal itself uh, very well and it would sort of pop out uh, very easily on its own. So I replaced those and since then it's been really really good so far. So quite happy happy with that and it was a pretty cheap thing. I think the, the little clips cost maybe 10 bucks or something like that and I got way too many. But you know good to have for the future I guess. Um, other expenses of course with a more expensive vehicle than for states where you've got to you know pay vehicle taxes and registration then those are going to be higher. Um, and then in my instance because I moved I had to pay a lot more than you normally would. In New Hampshire I paid $211 for the registration uh, state and for the city of Manchester and then I paid another $50 for the state inspection at Sunnyside Acura. So that was $261 and that would have normally carried me through um, the you know an entire calendar year um, but I moved down here to Texas in late May and then of course I had to register my car here in Texas so that cost another $198.50. So this is more expensive than normal I think you know in your mind um, we could ta take a $200 off of the um, the running expenses here, cost of ownership, because uh, again, that's an unusual circumstance. So how about electricity, right? Because of course the Tesla, Tesla uses electricity rather than gas. Uh, well, at the very beginning, I was pretty fortunate that um, one, I could plug into the apartment that I was renting. Um, I was just running a, a, an extension cord out the window. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, then my landlord ended up not being too uh, keen with me parking the car there anymore. Um, I don't know, we had some issues. But uh, luckily, Eversource, which is the public utility near me, um, had a uh, had free charging. It was, um, I think, level two, so it wasn't super fast, but it would it would help. And so I used that in combination with a supercharger a little bit, um, and then I ended up moving anyway. Um, so that was free, so I really didn't end up spending too much on electricity at that stage. Um, I will give you the totals overall. Um, but the when I did use a lot of uh, supercharging uh, was on my move, of course. Um, I drove the car all the way down from New Hampshire down to Texas. So from Manchester to New Hampshire to Plano, Texas is about 1,800 miles. And then um, a little bit later on, I took another trip to uh, have a family reunion in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. So from Plano, Texas to Knoxville, Tennessee was another 844 miles each way, plus about 750 miles or so of driving locally. I estimate that in the period um, since I got the car on March the 5th and when I got my, um, my garage here in the new apartments in September, I drove around 4,000. 250 miles and I spent a total of only $356.55 on supercharging. So that's really not bad because we're, we're talking about March, April, May, June, July, August. 
So that's a period of six months. So I think that's pretty darn good. Uh, that comes out to about 8.4 cents a mile uh, versus an average estimate in uh, as of November of 2021 of about 15 cents a mile uh, for the cost of gasoline. And of course that has gone up uh, quite a bit here in 2022. All right, so on, on top of the uh, the registration, which goes down, of course, we just talked about the electricity, the running costs of um, you know fuel uh, are gonna go down to the electric car, thankfully. Uh, one thing that did go up for me was my insurance. Uh, of course, uh, insuring a 2010 Acura TSX is going to be cheaper. Also moving from um, New Hampshire to Texas, I guess drivers are just not as good out here because uh, insurance rates are higher here in the Dallas area. Um, and you see a lot of messed up cars on the road. So yeah, um, definitely uh, have to be careful around here. Uh, in any case, um, I spent a total of $1,610 on my car insurance uh, during the period that we're looking at. But actually, if we look at just uh, what my renewal rate was, because after that, I got one of those, um, I got that software from Geico that monitors your driving and adjusts your insurance accordingly. Uh, my rate comes out to $1,352.92 a year. And that's pretty good, I think. Uh, the only real major expense that I had uh, to keep the Tesla running so far um, has been that I got a new set of tires because uh, the ones that um, were on there were starting to get uh, kind of more into the lower of the yellow zone. So I got a set of four Michelin Primacy MXM4s at discount tire and those cost $1189.88. I will say by the way that um, they didn't do a great job and in the future I will be getting the tires directly from Tesla. I wasn't happy with my particular discount tire location. Things were a little bit out of balance and I had that fixed by Tesla. So overall um, for this period if you add it all up I spent $11,560 um, total. Uh, but again, I think um, it's not fair to include things like the MCU2 upgrade and also FSD. So that puts us at, uh, under $5,000 at $4,972. But, and here's a big one, and uh, also an unusual one because of what happened again with the pandemic and with the uh, the crazy stuff in the used car market, uh, we can't forget about depreciation. And uh, generally, this is going to be a drag and um, a part of the cost of ownership that a lot of people don't factor in. Um, what I do is I go on Chase's um, My car feature and uh, I check what the estimated value is of my vehicle on a monthly basis and I track that for my Acura TSX as well. Um, there I used to lose an average of a, between $150 to um, $225 or so a month um, in depreciation, especially at the beginning of course the curve was, was sharper and then it kind of tapered off as the years went on. Um, but in this case, and this is crazy, uh, depreciation has been a negative $3,000. So that <laughs> nets out a lot of the expenses that I have and puts my total cost of ownership at $1,914. And then on top of that, we should consider that it's not really fair to um, say that we're gonna buy a set of tires every year, right? So um, these tires are warranted for, I think, 45,000 miles. Um, let's say that's gonna last me between four and five years. Um, it's gonna be less than it would on an ICE car because it is such a heavy vehicle, so less than it would be on my TSX. Uh, but still, let's say four years especially because I don't drive very much, I work from home. I, I think it'd be fair to amortize that at about $300 a year. And so I think a more accurate way to look at my cost of ownership over the last year for the Tesla has been just $900. Um, and of course that's you know hugely boosted from the fact that um, depreciation has been negative. Um, but anyway, I think you can see that generally though, um, owning a Tesla, as long as things don't go wrong, um, is, uh, is really not an expensive proposition. Uh, the electricity is less expensive. Um, maintenance operations are much lower. There's no oil changes. Um, the brake pads should last longer due to regenerative braking. Um, and it's a much safer vehicle too, so you can factor that into your, you know, the probability that something bad might happen as well. And then you've got sentry mode as well to help you um, in the event of any disputes with insurance. I mean, at the same time, I'll say that, you know, a, a Tesla Model S is a more expensive vehicle. So should anything go wrong, then I need to be prepared for more hefty repair bills and also because it's a, a, a rarer vehicle uh, it might be harder in terms of parts availability uh, relative to Model 3 uh, which is a less expensive vehicle still expensive but less expensive vehicle um, and will have likely more parts availability because they're cranking out those parts as it's a really high volume seller uh, but overall couldn't be happier with the cost of ownership here for my vehicle um, I can't believe it's already been a year and three months but still love my car uh, to this day and in fact I'm about to uh, head out and go to the grocery store in a little bit and then on my way I'll get to enjoy the car you know basically driving itself for the most part uh, and then also 
the uh, the great sound system. So yeah, really couldn't be happier with my Tesla. Um, some of you guys, by the way, have been commenting that you bought a, a used Tesla Model S. Um, so hopefully all of you are really happy with it. I'm really uh, excited to see that uh, my videos have helped you make your purchase decision. And um, yeah, hope you're incredibly happy with them. Um, thank you for uh, commenting and, and uh, interacting here on the channel as well. I'm pretty excited to see that we're now over 400 subscribers. So, you know, pretty cool. Thank you very much for your support and hope you are enjoying all the content. So if you did like today's video, by the way, please hit the like button and consider subscribing on that note. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.